Let's welcome in our QB1. It is the one and only Tim Cow. What's up, Tim? What's up, guys? Tim, what do you what do you uh, make of the whole? I'm sure you've been following it from Lexington. What do you make of the Deshaun Watson roller coaster that has now taken us to the point where at least he was ruled out early this week, and we know it's going to be PJ. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a weird deal, you know. It's uh, it's so it's so back and forth, you know. And I think um, you know it's pretty rare you see because I think he's been cleared, right, by the doctors. The doctor said he was he was cleared, um, well, he was as far cleared. as what I've read. But, yeah, he was cleared the day after the injury. Right. Uh, you know, uh, we don't know how, but yeah, exactly. So it's weird that you know you get cleared by the doctors and and you don't see a guy you know out there, but you know only Deshaun really knows how his body how his body feels. So um, you know I've been through those kind of injuries and I know that um, you know it gets in your head a little bit where you know I'm not 100. percent I know I'm not able to make the throws that I'm uh, capable of making. Uh, so it's uh, you know it, it's it, it's tough deal. It's frustrating for the fans to. You know, you want him, you want him out there. You know, he's such a good player, and you have um, you know so much of the offense revolves around what Deshaun brings to the table, and not having him out there is such a step back. So, uh, you know, you want him out there. It's it's tough, but hopefully, he can they can get it figured out. Deshaun can get healthy and get back out on the field soon. Uh, Tim, let me ask you this question. Um, you know, we were talking about the the, the mental psyche, especially at quarterback, um, as the guy that's supposed to be the leader, as the guy that everybody looks to, and is supposed to be the captain of the team. Um, one of the times that I always remember is, in, you know, when you were playing for the Browns, how many times you got sacked and when you got injured, uh, uh, you know, the one time, I think it was your shoulder, you, uh, they, they booed you, right? And um, how, do, how were you able, first of all, did that hurt your mental psyche that, you know, your home fam was booing, your home crowd was booing you? And two, um, how did you, how did that, that affect your, your psyche moving forward that, you know, you were injured and people may have not thought that you were injured that much or they were even upset for the simple fact that you were injured. Uh, what's your thought process in that and how it kind of juxtaposed how Deshaun Watson, you know, seems a little irritated that people are questioning him being injured? Yeah, definitely so. You know, with, with my injury, when that happened to me, it was a concussion. Um, so I got knocked out on a, uh, I think it was a Sunday night game. We were playing the Ravens at home. And uh, we were getting beat. We were playing bad in the game. But that was the year we went to the playoffs, actually. So, um, you know, I was having a good year. But in that game, we weren't playing well on offense. And um, I, I got hit in the head, got knocked out. And, um, you know, I don't remember the fans necessarily booing. I was kind of out of it. But, uh, you know, I just remember after the game, they put microphones in my face, which I definitely should not have been That's speaking insane. to the media. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know why they put me out there like that. You know, I, I certainly wouldn't have said the things that I said if they would have given me, you know, a day to cool off. You know, I would have handled it much better. But in that moment, um, you know, you've just been knocked out of a game. You're, you've got a concussion. Your fans are booing. It just feels like the weight of the world's coming down on you. And you get frustrated. And I said things that I, that I definitely regretted. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for, for Deshaun, it's, um, you know, it's, uh, you know I, I saw where you guys were talking about Deshaun said he sees everything. Like, that is awful for a quarterback. Like, I can't believe I didn't play in the social media era where we had, you know, to listen to people on Twitter and Instagram and all this kind of stuff. But I know if I did, that I wouldn't be reading that kind of stuff, you know, and I wouldn't be listening to what people were saying. And, you know, you really just have to focus on what the people inside your locker room are talking about and, and you know, have the belief in the, of, your, of your teammates and your coaches. But to go out there and say you're listening to what the media is saying and what the fans are saying, oh. uh, you know, on social media and all that kind of stuff, I think only hurts you mentally. Like, it's how do you – you know, how do you, um, you know, have the confidence in yourself after reading that kind of stuff? You know, it's very difficult. You know, people can say, I can block it out. I just want to, you know, but you, you really can't. You know, that, that, that stuff affects you. When the fans are booing, uh, people are complaining. They're questioning your toughness. They're questioning, uh, do you want to be out there? You're making this much money. Are you, you know, you are you just content with all the money you've made now? You don't even really want to play. You hear all those things. That That's difficult as a player. And I, I don't know why he would want to see that, but um you know, each guy's a little different, so I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I would have went the, the, the opposite route of that one. Tim, you know, first of all, Bernie was here in studio just gushing about how much he loves you yesterday. Uh, he's, he's your biggest fan, no doubt. He, he loves you. He was talking about all the injuries you played through. You know, I think there's a major flaw in sports in general, but especially in football. You guys, when you're playing, you're young you're great athletes. You know, sometimes guys like me who did not play, we can be dismissive of guys, uh, you know, careers who maybe weren't great, you know, whatever. whatever. Guy, like, I'll knock Jed Jedrick Wills because I don't think he's that good. But I know, I know down deep when I'm thinking about it rationally, to, just to get to the NFL, 
even if you play for two years, Dustin Fox, who I, who I did a show with for 12 years, he played in the league for three years. There's a million, million guys out there that would kill to play in the NFL for three years. I'm not going to, we shouldn't scoff at anybody's career. So there's a pressure to play in the NFL. There's outside of guys like Watson and a few other guys, there's not a lot of guaranteed money. So there's the pressure to make money. There's a the pressure to take care of your family when you know that maybe by 30, you don't know what the hell you're going to do with the rest of your life, okay? But I think it is imperative for the doctors and the coaches to be better than that. Like, there are times probably you played, and I understand why you played. And there are times where Bernie played, and I understand why Bernie played. But I think there had to be somebody that said, Tim, you can't play. You can't. I'm doing it. This is what's best for you. And I know that's easy for me to say as a non-player. But I feel like organizations do this all the time. Well, we got to win. We need Deshaun Watson. If Deshaun Watson can't play at a winning level, then what's the point? You're just hurting him and hurting the team anyway. We need. I, I, I think it's better than it was when you were playing and when Bernie was playing, but it's still not good enough. I know I rambled for a while. Fair, unfair, what do you think? No, I think that's fair. You know, it's certainly different than when, especially when Bernie played and when I played of, you know, the, you know, the, the, the trainers and the coaches, they, they were going to do anything to get you back out on the field. Um, you know, it just, if, if you could get out there and you could play, you, you were going, you know, and, and, you know, in my mindset when I was a player was, you know, I, I'm going to play, you know, unless I have a broken bone or I just had surgery, like I'm going to play through any injury that I can play through. And it was just kind of a, kind of that mindset that, that we had. Um, you know, and even though doctors are saying, hey, you probably shouldn't play, you're not 100%, like, you still want to be out there on the field, you just feel an obligation, or I did, I felt a very strong obligation to, um, you know, my teammates and my coaches and, and in the fans as well, as uh, that I need to be out there, I need to be under center, they're paying me a lot of money to play this position, I need to be accountable no matter how I feel, if I'm sick, if I'm injured, I wanted to be out there, and I know most guys have that type of mindset, and um, you know, but but you know the, the Deshaun thing has been handled. You know, in my opinion, pretty poorly as far as you know the communication 100%. with you know the the training staff, the coaches, and and Deshaun. They're all kind of saying a little different things, and um, you know, so you know it ultimately comes down to Deshaun. You know, he he knows his body w way better than any of us do, any of the trainers do, any of the coaches do. He knows if he's capable of going out there and playing. And from what I saw when he was out on the field against Indianapolis, he did not look like he was ready to play football. Um, you know, I think he, he may have rushed it a little bit. You know, he may need to may need a few more weeks because, you know, he didn't play well. Like he was out there, he was throwing interceptions. The ball didn't look like it had a whole lot of velocity on it. Uh, so I just hope he can, you know, get himself healthy and get back out on the field and, um, you know, and get back to that form. Hopefully that what he was in Houston, that's what we all want to see. That's what we paid him to be here for. So, you know, hopefully he can get back to that soon. Tim, we have spent a lot of time on Deshaun Watson this week and probably justified, but we do have a game this Sunday against Seattle. P.J. Walker's quarterback won here, and he is going to lead an offense that just scored 38 points, 39 points, excuse me, into a pretty tough environment to play in. As a quarterback on the road who's not a traditional starter, what does Coach Stefanski and Walker have to figure out as far as either in-game adjustments, audibles? Like, how does a backup quarterback – handle that environment on the road, especially in Seattle where the 12th man's as crazy as any fan base in the country. Yeah, that's an extremely tough place to go play a game. I played a road game there as well, and it's it's just so loud. So, you know, to me, especially for a backup, um, communication is, is key. You know, how are you going to communicate at the line of scrimmage? Because you're not going to be able – they're not going to be able to hear you more than likely on most plays. So, you know, you got to have your hand signals and everything. Uh, everyone has to be on the same page. There's probably extra meetings going on between the quarterback and the wide receivers uh, this week about, you know, hand signals, just getting up in front of the team and uh, in the meeting room and going through those signals – making sure everyone is on the same page, uh, you know, and then you're using a silent count, you know, so um, the offensive line, everyone has to be uh, on the same page and communicating and, you know, where the blitz is coming from, who's sliding to who, you know, how are we going to pick these guys up? Uh, there's just a lot that goes into it, uh, you know, especially when you got a quarterback who hasn't started many games in this league, started many games with this team, and, um, you know, you're going on in a tough environment on the road like that, trying to communicate those things. It's, it's, it's extremely difficult for a starter, you know, a guy who's, you know, seasoned and been in the league for a long time, much less a guy who hasn't played very often, uh, especially within this system. This is a stupid question, but PJ, I mentioned earlier in this, I preface all my questions that they're stupid, but he had four <laughs> practices that I can count prior to this week. He had the week of San Francisco three, and he had last Wednesday before Deshaun came back Thursday, Friday. So he's had four practices. How much does practice matter? 
in a game week preparation when you're thrust into a situation like he was last week coming in early without a lot of reps as opposed to this week where you have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm not saying he's going to be Deshaun out there, but I wonder if we can see at least some sort of incremental improvement in his play just because he knows the game plan and he takes all the first team reps all week long. Yeah, it makes a big difference. You know, I think obviously you're getting more reps. You're getting all those walkthrough reps as the first team guy. You know, when you're the backup quarterback, the first team, uh, the starter is out there going through the, all those walkthroughs throughout the week where you're going through very important stuff in those walkthroughs where you're talking about blitzes and, and you know, side adjustments and how you're going to handle that. When you're the backup, you know, you're just standing behind the huddle, you know, kind of going through those mental reps. What would I do here? How am I going to do this? But when you're up there and it's live and you're you're the one having to make those calls and those checks, um, you know, you, you, you start to get more comfortable with that because you're, you've done it in practice. You, you know what kind of what to expect when the game comes on Sunday. So, you know, I think it makes a big difference, you know, especially like I said, and those, those walkthroughs really help the red zone practice as well. You know, you're getting those red zone and those third down reps in practice that you normally only get a couple of if you're the backup. So just getting those extra reps and, and really understanding, you know, what the defense is going to try to do to you in certain situations. And, and, and also just the mental part of it going into the game, knowing that you're going to be the starter. You're not wondering if, you know, is, is Deshaun going to make it through this whole game? Am I going to have to come in? What's the situation going to be like if I'm thrust into the game like he was last week? So, you know, you just feel more comfortable going into it as a starter. You know what's uh, what's expected of you as, as a starting quarterback. And and, and certainly that preparation of, of having those practices and, and being the guy all week long certainly helps the quarterback get, uh, get ready for those moments. Tim, when you when there is a, a um, backup quarterback uh, in a game, um, is this a thing? Um, do they ever – <clears throat> Say, for instance, if you're the starter, you may uh, have a different progression than a backup has, right? Or maybe, um, you know, as a backup, they only ask you to read one side of the field. Or if they, you know, they don't let you audible. Are there any, like, uh, I guess, parameters or guardrails that, that Coach Stefanski um, would be looking at giving P.J. Walker in order for him to play faster or the team to be more efficient, especially when you're trying to check into line of scrimmage? Yeah, I think I think you uh, simplified a little bit, you know, especially for a guy who hasn't played a whole lot, started a lot of games. Uh, you, you don't want to give him too much, especially at the line of scrimmage. You don't want to go up there with two or three plays called and have him doing a lot of checks, a lot of run checks, uh, you know, a lot of run to pass checks, those kind of things. Uh, that uh, you know, you really want to uh, you know, you know, it's it's uh, you know, the starters, you know, they, that those are the guys you want to throw all that information at. These kind of you know, when you got a backup quarterback like this who's going to be starting a game, you know, in my opinion, it's best to say, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it very simple for you. We're going to get the football out of your hand first and foremost. We're not going to take negative plays. We're not going to hold on to the ball. We're not going to take sacks. Uh, we're going to do a lot of three-step stuff. We're going to give you some screen game. We're, we want to get the football out of your hand. And w when a quarterback sees the ball completed. It just kind of builds momentum and confidence. It's like a like a great shooter in basketball when they're struggling, and all of a sudden they get to the free throw line, and they see a couple shots go in. Next thing you know, they heat up a little bit, and it's very similar for a quarterback as well. Uh, just to see the ball completed, you start you start feeling more confident, you start getting in a little bit more of a rhythm. So I think those kind of things are very important for a quarterback uh, who's making uh, you know one of his you know very few starts that he's made in the league. Also, some play action helps quite a bit, you know, getting the ball out to the tight end, crossing routes, little check downs over the middle, uh, just, just making sure that he's playing fast. You know, I think that's the biggest thing, not trying to ask too much, not giving him him these big full field reads where he's out there trying to go from one side of the field to the other. Uh, just one, two, if it's not open, check it down or run. Uh, you know, just make it simple for him like that. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure that that's, the, that's kind of what the game plan will be this week. Tim, thanks a bunch, man. We'll see you next week. Enjoy the game thanks, on Tim. Sunday. All right, appreciate it, guys.